great is God, exalted in power, majestic above all. The heavens tell of his greatness. The skies display his awesome craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. In creating the heavens, God also created the earth and formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The God of love created man and woman in his own image to have a relationship with him. And so in the beginning, they revered and honored God and lived in harmony with him. This continued until one day, Satan tempted the woman to eat the forbidden fruit, and she gave it to the man who also ate. In so doing, mankind rebelled against God and went their own way. As a result of this sin, mankind was separated from God and was thrown out of the Garden of Eden. But God still loved mankind. It was never his desire to be separate from those he created. Yet how could God be holy and the source of perfect justice if he did not judge mankind for their sin? In his holy book, God reveals his plan to save the world from his judgment. One of the first to see this plan unfold was Abraham. Abraham was a righteous man whom God promised to bless and make his descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky. To test his obedience, God told Abraham to sacrifice his son as an offering to him. Abraham trusted God and sought to obey him. As he raised his knife to kill his son, the angel of the Lord stopped him. He saw that Abraham feared God and was willing to obey him. Then Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket, and he sacrificed the ram instead of his son as an offering to God. And so God showed Abraham that a lamb or similar animal was to be slain as a temporary covering for sin until God would provide his ultimate sacrifice to pay for the sins of mankind. Instead of sin separating man from God, the sacrifice would restore their relationship. The Holy Scriptures speak of one who was to come and be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world, 
As the ram took the place of Abraham's son, so this one who would come would take man's place so he could be forgiven. Some refer to this person as the Messiah, the one who would come and reconcile the world back to God once and for all. The prophets predicted many things in detail about the Messiah hundreds of years before he appeared. The prophet Isaiah foretold that his birth was to be a miraculous one. A virgin would conceive a child who was to be called, in a spiritual sense, the Son of God. The prophet Micah predicted that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. While the prophet Zechariah foretold his entry into Jerusalem on a donkey and his betrayal by Judas, one of his followers. Isaiah prophesied what the Messiah would do when he came. The Lord's anointed will preach the good news to the poor, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives, and proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. So who was the Messiah? In the first century, a prophet came called Jesus. Some thought he was the one the prophet spoke about. Could this be? Did his life fulfill what was predicted of him? Was Jesus more than a prophet? What follows is his story, based on eyewitness accounts as recorded in the Holy Scriptures. An actor plays the part of Jesus, and though no actor is worthy of such a role, it has been done so that we may understand and benefit from the life of Jesus. Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the Holy Scriptures, God declared the Messiah would come to be the Savior of the world. The life of Jesus gives evidence that he is indeed the one the prophets spoke about. Isaiah prophesied that the virgin will conceive a child and will give birth to a son. Centuries later, the birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Holy Scriptures declared that the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. This means that Jesus was to be called the Son of God in a spiritual sense. We see this in how he lived his life. He healed people from disease, forgave their sins, turned them back to God, and promised them a place in God's eternal kingdom. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin in their place, and then rose again, conquering death. Jesus said, no one can take my life from me, 
I lay it down of my own accord. The life of Jesus not only fulfilled the writings of the prophets, but also confirmed the truth of God's holy word. The prophets declared, the word of the Lord is flawless. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. Jesus himself said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness. But when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, he chose to go his own way, and his actions separated him from the Creator. The Holy Scriptures declare that all have sinned, and the payment for sin is death. This means a spiritual death, eternal separation from God. But just as God provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son, so he sent Jesus the Messiah to die in our place. His life, death, and resurrection restored the relationship between God and all those who put their trust in him. Now those who follow Jesus not only have their sins forgiven, but are saved from God's eternal judgment. They are assured of paradise and will live with him forever. It is this life and freedom from the guilt and power of sin that Jesus offers each person today. This does not mean following a religion, but choosing to have faith in Jesus, who says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. This means turning to God and trusting Jesus to come into our lives, to forgive our sins, and to make us what he wants us to be. It is not enough to intellectually agree with his claims, nor to have an emotional experience. We receive him by grace through faith as an act of the will. When people are ready to become followers of Jesus, the Messiah, they may speak to him in a simple prayer. Perhaps you are ready now to open your life to God. If so, you may join in the following prayer to him, silently, in your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess and repent of my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. As I become one of your followers. Amen. Jesus said about his followers, My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. In order to experience the abundant life which Jesus promised, his followers talk to God each day in prayer and read or listen to his word. They tell others about him and meet regularly with those who love and follow him. Remember his wonderful promise. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Lo, I am with you always even to the end of the world.